self-published fantasy? Let's see what it's made of. I'm not a stranger towards the self-published realm of sci-fi and fantasy. After all, my favorite book is self-published. However, the thing is, I am not the most well-versed in this area, in this genre of books. And so, I'm going to do an experiment where I read five different self-published fantasy series and tell you what I think about them and hopefully can recommend you some good ones. Here are the five series that I'll be reading. The first one would be the Thread Light series by Zach Argel, the first book being The Voice of War. The Cruel God series by Trudy Skies, the first book being The Thirteen Hour. Arcane Ascension by Andrew Rowe, the first book being Sufficiently Advanced Magic. The Ashes of Everine by Tiago Abdullah, the first book being A Touch of Light. The Bound and the Broken series by Ryan K. Hill, the first book of the The first book being of Blood and Fire. I know, I know what you're thinking. You're saying this to yourself. Then these books, some of these series aren't even completed yet. Why are you reading this? How would you fairly judge all of them when they are not completed? But I really don't give a shit. Because I am really interested in reading these and these are the ones that I want to get to as fast as possible. And this experiment is going to let me get to them as soon as possible. So, I'm just going to do whatever I want. Okay, so here's the problem. As much as I'm very excited to try all of these books, I can't jolly well read all of them at one go. I mean, it would just ruin the experience, I feel. Because I'll be consuming new stories, trying to understand all of them and the characters in the same span of time and just get complicated. It'll just get complicated because I'll mix them all up. So, I decided to come up with a way that will make it much easier for me to um, actually move forward with this experiment more fairly, to say. Yeah. So here's the thing. Since I'm equally excited for all of them, I will choose... I must choose at least one series to start, right? Properly. And so here's the plan. We'll read the first chapter of each of the first books, right? We'll read the first chapter of each of the five. And from there, we will rank them from first to fifth. From there, we will decide which series I would finish first, or at least read up to their latest book, and then we will come to a conclusion. And so this would be great for all of you, because I'll have multiple videos for vlogs, um, regarding these series and you guys can catch up and understand the series better and whether you would like to pick them up and the point is let's just start with reading the first chapters of the first books of the series first let's go hey guys so i finished reading the first chapter of voice of war by zack argel and that would be the first book to the Tread Light series. And my dudes, girls, boys, and whatever in between, um, that was really impactful. Okay, so, so let me narrate the story, okay? So we open up and we're in a church. We're in a church and it seems like we're christening a baby. It seems, okay? But it's not Christianity, but it seems so. And we're following two main characters who are attending their friend's baby's christening. It seems like a christening, okay? Like I said, it's not a christening, but it seems like a christening. And then, and then, um, we realize that this is a really serious event, and it's a little bit scary, and this baby will have some eye drops that will be put into his eyes because, um, because we're going to find out if this baby has colored eyes, you know? And so, dramatically, they put the eye drops in and you realize, god damn, the baby has brown eyes. And in this world, they call it achromatic eyes. And that isn't good. Because why? Because that means the baby is not a tread light weaver, sort of, you know. And it can, it can weave light. I don't know. I don't really know yet. And so, and so, and then 
this is problematic for the parents of the baby because this is their third child, and by their laws, they're only allowed to have two children. But they decided to have a third child, and you can keep the third child according to the government because it if it's a threat like Weaver, and like yeah yeah it's cool you can keep the baby, but if it is not, then you gotta give it up. And I'm like, what you guys took the risk? I mean, they did take a risk. That is pretty much guaranteed because technically this baby is ninety nine point nine percent likely to be a tread light weaver because, um, both parents are tread light weavers and the siblings before are also those things and so the baby's achromatic is gonna be problematic to have to give up the children. This is a very sad event and so our main characters are watching this unfold before their eyes and they're freaking out for their friends but also also they're looking at the baby in their body. I mean, they're looking at the baby that they have, which um, the wife is currently pregnant. And, you know, they're feeling a lot of emotions with everything and feeling very sad. And they take this goddamn baby away. And the priest just literally burns the baby's eyes with acid. And so this baby will serve as a, you know, becomes a... um. No, so the baby has now entered the church and is in servitude to the priest and the church and whatsoever and they're burning the eyes and burning the eyesight away from the baby and so now the baby's blind and is no longer your friend's baby anymore. Point is they leave the church and it's a very dramatic feeling of like, Oh gosh, this is very sad, we're never gonna have a third child. Yeah, like our two characters are talking about that. And then the very pregnant wife starts to like bleed. And the husband is like, okay, wow, um, alright, why are you bleeding? Doesn't look like you're bleeding because you're gonna give birth, even as pregnant as you are. He seems to be medically trained of some sort. And he's like, I know how to, ha-. I, like, he, he seems to be like a medic of some sort, yeah. And, and, and so, he, he is freaking out. He's like, I'm pretty sure that it's not because you're giving birth, um, um, you're definitely in danger. I've seen cuts. I know how to do that. I even know how to support mothers who are giving birth. But this, this is another level. And I'm like, okay, well, what's going on? We're freaking out. I'm freaking out. A random. So, and so then he tells his um, footman, okay, can you get a doctor? Because right now, this is truly a crucial period of time. Like we are, this is my wife is in danger. Okay, my wife is in fucking danger. And so... He gets um, a doctor. He runs off to get a doctor, and the, the two of them are freaking out on the floor of the stairs of the church. And then, and then a mysterious guy in black just came comes out of nowhere. And he's like, like, oh, he tells our main character, I'm a, I'm a doctor. Do you trust me? Do you trust me because I'm gonna save your wife and your baby? And he's like, who the freak are you? And and then he's like, yeah, just trust me. Do you trust me? And then, you know, very much that moment where. Aladdin asks for Jasmine's hand and said, Do you trust me? What? Do you trust me? Me And that was the doctor and our main character. Anyway, point is, they drag the... No, they don't drag. Okay. They carry the wife into the carriage and then the, the doctor slams the door on, the, uh, um, on our main character, on the husband figure. And then he does something to the wife. We're not sure what. And then he comes out of the carriage, and then he tells our main character, like, uh, they're coming for you, your life is in danger, you have to protect yourselves, this is, this is, this is beyond my help, I'm just letting you know, they're coming for you. And then our main character is like, who is coming for me? Who is coming for our baby and us, and what is going on? And I'm also asking, what is going on? And so... He leaves, he just skedaddles, like, okay, mysterious man. He, mysterious, he mysteriously just skedaddles and to the loo away. And then he, the husband enters the carriage with the wife. And she seems like she was not in pain before and she was comfortable. And now I don't know what is wrong and where is the child. And then the chapter ends there. And I'm like, Jesus Christ, I need to continue. How can I not continue on? So that's where we are so far. Very, very, very intrigued. But I have more to read. So I, I can't say that this is the one that I am the most excited to read now. But so far it is. Okay. So I'll keep you guys updated with the next book I read. 
Okay, everyone. So I finished the first chapter of a uh, sufficiently advanced magic by Andrew Rowe, and that will be the first book in. You see, I can't remember. Okay, yeah, doesn't matter. I don't have to remember. It's okay. So point is, we just jump straight into everything, and I, I was a little bit confused. Still, so, uh, we we are introduced to our main character in the first. POV, which then immediately turned me off, but I was like, okay, just just pull through the now. Like you don't know if this will be it for you, and um, immediately I didn't find myself connecting to the first chapter very much because of the writing style. I think it's very straightforwardy and um, very like tell it to your face kind of thing, and just describing everything that is going on right in your face, and rather rather like. Then show it's a lot of tell. Anyway, point is our main character. <coughs> our main character is going to a trial, it seems, and um, so he is like immediately he's in a trial already, and this trial seems to be very difficult. He's supposed to pass through different levels of like different magical stages in this tower and by the end of the tower he should be granted a wish of some sort by the goddess in his world and <clears throat> seems very video game like which obviously this is a what is known to be a, a rpg um rpg fantasy novel and uh, very different from what i usually read but i think it's a good try anyway so point is our main character immediately jumps into the trials we already we don't really know much of anything and we're just trusting everything that he's telling us about these trials. And we know that it's very difficult. We know that his parents have passed these trials with flying colours whatsoever and they like wanted their eldest son to pass too but he kind of failed and that has become a legacy in their family that is not great. And so he doesn't want to disappoint his parents and he's doing this sort of for the sake of his brother it seems. And so we're going into the trials and he's going through different rooms that require different skill sets like brain power or physical power and he's doing all sorts of things. And that's literally the entire chapter and then it ends there as he just sort of finishes the first two to three rooms that he enters. And so not the most intriguing start, but I am excited about the world that is set in just because it seems very familiar to me. I really like Swat Art online as an anime when i first watched it and i think this is the most appropriate i'll keep you guys updated with the next one i'm gonna do my skincare as i talk to you about um the third book that i read which is the cruel gods um is it the cruel gods and i just read the first chapter of it and i have some Thoughts. Okay, straight up, not the most compelling already for me. Again, in the first person narrative, already feeling a lot of hate towards it. I didn't like it that much because of that reason. But also, interestingly, this uh, this particular series is kind of um, arcane inspired. I don't know if the author ever said that, but... Yeah, I don't know if the author ever said that this is meant to be an arcane-inspired world, but um, that's what I heard from Tammy. Yeah, so uh, this is this is not too bad. Uh, it's already very different from arcane in certain ways, and yet very similar to arcane in a lot of ways. So first up is that the world seems to be split into two areas which our main character belongs to the bottom half of the world. She's not so privileged clearly because she's living in the slum side of the city, like the underside of the city, and she has to go work at the top side um, to, to just uh, give tithe to her gods. So additionally, this world is controlled by gods, and this is explained by our main character, how different groups of people serve different uh, groups of gods, and the gods are the... Um, main like bosses of everyone like they are the masters of everyone and they have to tithe they have to give tithe 
to their um, gods every day it seems but they seem to have like to serve their tithe and at the same time they have to um, work for that tithe so it's not there's no way you can get tithe right for your god so yeah and it seems like she is someone who is not very religious and she doesn't want to believe in her god like she doesn't feel like the they, she feels like the gods are very cruel yes and that that be that and the story starts out with our main character being late I can't remember her name now. I just read it. My God. Anyway, point is she's late. She's she's going to Topside because she has a job to run to and also she needs to pay tithe. And she's going with a friend that seems to be a different kind of species from her. They all seem to have different skin colours and our main character has like a bluish uh, skin colour while her friend has like a greenish skin colour. And they are rushing towards the Topside because they're going to their job and they need to pay tithe. And their job... The two of them, they are kind of like spies for the underside. Not too sure about that yet, but it seems like they are spies for an organization to like find out a mystery that's happening, which is that people are stealing... Oh, the Glimmer people, which is an organization, is stealing people from other organizations that serve other gods who work with them, which is kind of supposed to be illegal, and and the main characters are supposed to be and the main character and our main character is trying to find out what's going on with that. It's so it seems, but when she is trying to get to the elevator that will bring her up to the top side, she runs into a lady that seems to be distressed, and that lady appears to be one of those workers that get stolen and um get, get stolen or whatsoever and point is she is working for the glimmer against her will sort of and she's doing this because of like why not sure sure anyway she approaches her because she seems to be in distress and she's crying and she's like i need to help her sort of not too sure i can't remember if she i i think she wanted to help her yeah so she approaches her and and tries to get her to go up to the top side with her but she's like a little bit deranged, the lady. And there is a strict timetable for the le- the elevator to go up to the top side. Um, because it runs like 20 minutes up. So that's a very strict um, timeline. And so the elevator master doesn't want to wait for her. But she, she pleads and she says like, this, this lady is my friend, like she's my sister. Just let her be for a little bit. She's, she's kind of distressed, like something happened and blah, blah, blah. And all this commotion ends up attracting our other main character, who is a diviner, it seems. And he, so he's like a, like a police officer? Yeah, he's a detective, it seems. A law enforcement, uh, a law enforcer. And the main char- our main character thinks that she's in trouble because, oh shit, if this guy's involved, I'm going to run into trouble because he can see in my mind like he can see all the shit that has been going on with in my life and know that i'm a spy and know all the illegal stuff i'm doing and she freaks out and then it's actually it actually seems to me like he's trying to investigate about this thing that the glimmer are doing about stealing people from different organizations sort of and so they both enter the lift eventually after the woman just gets randomly obliterated by her god. I don't know why that happened. They're cruel, I think. And so they take the elevator up. And she tries to get away from the officer. And she did so successfully. And that's when the first chapter ends. So already a very, very interesting premise. Because we can tell... I really, I'm someone who really, really loves um stories with gods involved because i like when they're cruel because that's truly the nature of gods especially in like greek um greek mythology or roman mythology the gods are not very kind and this story definitely follows that uh, narrative and there's many gods which i find is a very interesting system uh i like that the steampunk setting and i like that it's very similar to arcane it really gives me the vibes um everything else is not the same the story is not the same but we are following an underdog and we're also following a top dog. So that is sort of the similar part in Arcane, the very, very minor part, honestly. So considering everything, 
Uh, I can't tell for sure if this is better than sufficiently advanced magic, but definitely it seems like, you know, the voice of war is um, the one that I like the most. But I'll keep you guys updated after reading the next two books. I just finished reading the first chapter of A Touch of Light, which is the first book in the Ashes of Everin. And, um, nah, yeah, I, I quite like this one. I quite like this one, maybe because of how it chooses to open. But, um, <clears throat> so, our main character, Adrian, is very, very sad at the opening of the chapter. We are not sure why until we realize that it's being revealed that his brother has died. Why did his brother die? Not too sure. How did his brother die? Not too sure. But the point is that it seems like the brother... Um, went into one of the lands and he has never been at war with his lands before but Adrian suspects that his father is the reason why his brother has attacked this lands whether is it to obtain something special for his dad or not it is it is it seems like that is the case and that's why his brother died in the act of doing so and he's just very frustrated and he's upset and he's wondering why did his brother go and do that and blah 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 and you also realize that he has a betrothed of some sort um a fiance and she's supporting him during this time and you're like wow rare to have a main character to open up and have already a very solid main, uh, solid love interest so um that's exciting and so <clears throat> we are going to the funeral for a his brother and we understand his family dynamics which is that he has another sister who is a high priestess and that he has an older brother and he's the youngest and that um his dad is kind of like a tyrant to him towards the entire family where he's really really strict with them and he expects them to not question and just do everything that he wants them to do and adrian is not someone who can just do things without questioning and that's not what his father likes out of him and so we are attending the funeral and we realize that his brother is going to get burnt and his ashes are going to be thrown into sea and in this world it seems that burning burning the person's body and then scattering the ashes into the sea is not great in a way that like, it symbolizes that the person is not even worthy of being like when they die it's not worthy of being part of the motherland and that they burn the body burning the body is not a way to honor someone and especially throwing their ashes into the sea that's especially not honoring that person and he doesn't understand why because his brother has always been very loyal to his dad and he's always um served his nation and yet he didn't deserve a proper funeral we see how adrian wants to speak to his dad about how they want to move forward with politics and they sit down and he tells his father that we, they should obtain a political alliance with one of the countries that they are um having to invade to through that they have to invade through to reach another country that they are having f a fight with, which happens to be the country that his fiance is from, which then makes me question a lot of things. Like, question mark, question mark, question mark. She's also uh, the royalty for that particular country. And Daddy Daddykins does not agree. He's like, no, I don't believe in alliances. We are not doing this. And then the chapter ends there. So, um, not the most exciting based on how I described it, but I guess the most intriguing factor is the is the fact that his brother died out of mysterious circumstances, and that's part of the intrigue of the world that we're gonna find out part of the politics, and I wanna know what happens there. So, and and I'm so sorry, I didn't read the first chapter. I read the prologue of um the book because the prologue was pretty long it was almost a chapter long so i just read the prologue to get the taste tester and so far i don't know why i'm not connecting with adrian but i'm connecting with the entire like circumstance of the world and story already which is making me more interested in this but maybe the same level as um very similar level as the crow gods so we'll see and so we'll see how it progresses but i'll read the final book 
as part of this challenge, which is of Blood and Fire, and I'll update you then, and then we'll do the ranking from there and choose the book that I'm meant to read for the next vlog. Yeah. I've just finished the first chapter as well as the prologue for Of Blood and Fire, which is the first book to the Bound and the Broken series. And mm, I like it very much. Really creating a very interesting premise and the kind of premise that I actually enjoy as a reader, which is like the small town farm boy and it seems like there will be a venture for the farm boy to go on. So in the prologue, we're introduced to a raid that's happening and it seems like an organization has gone to catch um, some, 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 I don't know, um, thieves? So in the prologue, it seems like this organization called the Sigils are chasing down this group and they managed to almost kill everyone except for one last person and this person gets recruited to become part of the sigils and that is the end of the prologue which then gets me really excited to find out what exactly is this order and what they're doing and who are they and what are they and what you yeah, know asking many many questions okay and then we jump um into the future and we're following young kellen who seems to be like a farm boy in this small town and he he's very mischievous he's, he's having a lot of fun he has a little he has a pet wolf it seems and that wolf is super fun and you know just living life you know to the greatest and i envy him he goes on to actually um meet his friends for a hunt and so they hunt down a stag and they're having a lot of fun and they manage to get this stag and they realize that something wrong something is wrong with the stag like it gets it seems to be attacked by some creature of some sort they do not know what kind of creature but that spooks them out greatly and that's where the first chapter ends i don't think i explained it very well but because considering the kind of premise that we are in which is like semi you know medieval times it seems and i really like a ordinary person going on an adventure kind of story as you can tell i i'm very inclined to read this one and with the uh, ryan cahill's writing style it's very easy to get through and understand where he's coming from and um understand the world that's surrounding them so so he's not too descriptive but he paints a really vivid picture for me and that's getting me really excited to read this too and um I'm not gonna lie, I'm intrigued. Um, so, probably catch you guys later. Um, and we'll do the ranking and finally choose which one to go with first. Okay, because I'm here really contemplating on my choices right now and I need to think through them. So yeah, I'll catch you guys later. Hi everyone, welcome to my TED Talk. Well, it's not a tech talk, but let's go through my rankings um, for the five books that I read. And for the first chapters, I read for these five books. So, I'm going to review what I felt about each and every one of them. So, on the fifth place, we have Sufficiently Advanced Magic by Andrew Rowe. Um, which is the first book to the Arcane Ascension. Okay, so, you know, I liked a lot about this book. In fact, I like the idea of the game. I like the idea of the premise. It reminds me so much about Sword Art Online. But there's just things that didn't work out for me. Like, the pros being really, like, not my favourite. I told you guys before, I do not like first-person narratives. And that takes out a lot of points for me when usually it starts on a first-person narrative. It needs to grab me rather quickly in order for me to really in want to read something. And compared to everyone, the first chapter is probably the least compelling because he's just started this competition. Yes, it's compelling to know what the con competition is about. But otherwise, it's just like, yeah, he's going through 
he's going through the levels and doesn't seem to have a very tough time and it, it's not as exciting as the rest. In the fourth place, we have A Touch of Light by Tiago Abdallah and this is alright also. I had a good I had a good feeling about the first chapter. In fact, I think I told you guys that I really like um, this one in terms of the world and the setting. But, um, well, the setting is something that I enjoy. The world doesn't feel as interesting. Like, they just talk about griffins. Not, I'm not very sure of the political stance that the characters are taking. and Which makes sense because it's just the first chapter. But... I don't, I don't really care about the dynamics of the characters. I think when it comes to his um, father and whatsoever, like the, the, the chapter opens with him being upset with his dad and everything, and I don't really like that tyrant father like trope um, in fantasy. So yeah, so the father is part of the character dynamics with our main character that I did not enjoy and really threw me off. But otherwise, it's somewhat interesting, like I said, because of the because of the way that, uh, because of the setting of the world that I know of. Although theoretically, it is more boring compared to the rest of them. So, the next one at third place is The 13 Hour by Trudy Skies, which is the very first book to the Crow Gods. And I liked a lot about this book because immediately when it begins, I was like, okay, sucked right back in into Arcane, a world that is similar to Arcane in a lot of ways, but it's just that I think it's really not enticing compared to the top two that I'm going to show you guys later on. Um, I think because, first of all, again, in the first POV, and our character was bringing herself down a lot, which I, I don't need to read about a character that brings herself down a lot because I already bring myself down a lot and I don't need to see that right there on the page to make me feel like I can connect. But if anything, just this is a part of me that I don't like and therefore I don't like seeing that on page. But yeah, so I didn't really connect very well with the characters in the first um, chapter which is normal. But the premise is, the premise and the first chapter is not as exciting as the other two. So it's not that it's not bad. In fact, I really like the idea of the gods. Like, I really love a god trope in fantasy books where the gods are really cruel people, the um, people, cruel entities that just want to have fun and they screw their humans around for their own benefit and fun. Yeah, so that's exactly that. But when I read this, maybe the pros didn't live up to top two levels and so that's why I put it in third place compared to the other two. It's not that it's not bad and actually none of these are bad. In fact, I enjoy all of these but when I compare them, which one stood out to me more, you know? Yeah. So in second place, da -da, we have Of Blood and Fire by Ryan Cahill. So starting off already, I'm loving the premise. We start off with a young boy. Um, who is a farm boy and that's already very exciting for me. I read the pro there's a prologue to this too, but the prologue's so short. So I decided to read the prologue first, then move on to the um first chapter. And already it's something that I know I like. It's so similar to like you no know, Aragon where uh, he's just a little farm boy and he stumbles upon a great adventure that is very dangerous, full with a lot of um intrigue and fear and possibly you could die kind of thing and I felt like um, yeah this is what Of Blood and Fire is giving me and it's the very first book to the Brown and the Broken series and immediately I connected to the world and the prose and I really like the way that um, Ryan Cahill writes so I knew that I wanted to read this but then the top um, place trumped all of these as you guys remember, I had a very, very, very good first chapter with this one. And, drum roll please. It's Voice of War by Zach Argel, which is the first book to the Treadlight series. And, 
is it really surprising for the way I was talking about it and describing it when I was uh, first vlogging about the reading experience? Um, honestly, no, because that first chapter was so easy to get hooked on and you're just like, what's going to happen next? What's going to happen next? You really want to know. You, you get really excited, truly. So I got really instantly hooked onto the premise and the world and I desperately wanted to find out more. Even if, like the whole idea of the thread lights, the ideas that people can thread weave, but what is thread weaving? What is this politics about this world? And why must they have certain things that happen? And it's, it's just very, a very um, explosive start, truly it was. And it's probably the most heart-raising, show-stopping chapter of all the first chapters like I said like I said it's not about one being you know horrible and this one being great in fact all of them great but which one would capture me the most and so unsurprisingly it is Voice of War by Zach Argyle you know so that's the end of it and thank you for coming to my TED talk thank you very much everyone and so that concludes the vlog we have reached our goal, and so I'm starting with The Voice of War um, by Zach Argel. I'll catch you guys in the next vlog, but I hope you enjoyed this one and you're looking forward to my reading experience with the Treadlight series by Zach Argel. And thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next vlog reading Treadlight series by Zach Argel. Bye!